screen. Well, good afternoon. Welcome back to the Men's European Cup 2018, Game 4. I'm the lovely Beatrix, and joining me is the gorgeous S Terminate and Riggs on production, who you can't see, but I promise is looking just as glam. We're going to go straight into the rosters with Tyne and Fear, first of all. So for Tyne and Fear, we are playing number one, Dark Matter, 137, Fubar, 181, Tang, 26, Chemical, 42, Badam, 44, Kamikaze, number 50, Bull, 567, Dalai Karma, 6, Georgie Bear, 64, 60 Quad Bit, 762, Geminition, 8, Sparky, 82, Dog, 83, Nicholas Rage, 831, Mustache, 9, Moo, 99, Sparky. So that is who will be skating for Tyne and Fear. And in the orange, it's Barrow Inferno. 01 Duke of York, 027 Nomad, 117 Chob, 1759 Beer Mat, 28 Jardine, 289 Dynamo, 586 Speedy Fonzales, 66 Scandalous, 69 Princess Leia, and 84 Roseblade. So we've got about a minute and a half before we get into the live action, because this is game four of the uh, Men's European Cup, Ga uh, day one, game one, day one, I don't know where I am, day one of this two-day tournament. We've already seen Gothenburg versus Glasgow this morning, Helsinki and the Mad Riders, Lincolnshire versus the Mannequin Beasts, and shortly after this at four o'clock, we have more games coming up for you, Southern Discomfort playing next. Game six, we'll see New Wheeled Order, and at 8 p.m. tonight, our final for the day. So lots of roller derby action for your eyeballs back at home. Fantastically attended tournament up here at the Walker Dome in Newcastle. It's my first um, Men's European Cup. Heard a lot of good stories about it, and I'm really enjoying myself so far. It's good to be here. And while we have time, 30 seconds to go. Just going to go through the officials that are out on track. Halo Jones, Linz and Needles. Domination, Mina Harker, Purple Pain, Iceman, Comic Sans MS, Speedy Convalesce, Hurt Ratio Nelson, Puppy Shredder, Law Have Mercy, McFarlane, Sven Will Be Famous, Mercy Be Coop, Rolling Rat, Glenn More Angry, Judge Red, Victoria Velociraptor, and Scarborella. And as the first demo of this game is about to start, we have Dark Matter up on the track next to Jardine. They're jamming for Barrow Infernos. And they are off. We have Dark Matter trying to push her in the front. Gets fast, gets out as the first lead jammer in this game. Well, Jardine held at the back of the back just by pivot line. Pushes forward, finds space on the outside. But already, Tyne and Fears, Dark Matter with that lead, puts points on the board for them. Tyne and Fear, of course, playing in the white if you've just joined us and calling off that jam. So five points on the board for Tyne and Fear. No points so far for Barrow. And Barrow with one skater already sitting in the Sisu mouth guard penalty box. So that is their pivot of Nomad as the jammer for Barrow on track. Beautiful work on the inside line by Nomad to grab that lead. Moo takes the outside line. There's Nomad coming in on a scoring pass. Hit out though, forced to recycle by number 64, 60 quad bit. And Nomad once again runs the gauntlet of blockers. Straight up the inside line, into turn three, jumps the apex, beautiful work to grab those points and put some on the board for Barrow. Moo just patiently waiting behind Nomad, following through the back to grab further points. And we're gonna see some replays here. Check out this lead from Nomad. Straight up that inside line, dodges the hit to find the space. Beautiful work. 
A very agile skater does not need a lot of space. Who also doesn't need a lot of space for Barrow is Roseblade, who's now lining up behind the jammer line. 17 points to Tyne and Fear. Five points for Barrow so far. Barrow, though, grabbing that lead jammer status once again. Roseblade doing fantastic work. Sparky, however, is in pursuit of Roseblade here, both headed towards the pack. Roseblade putting some points on the board for his team, but I'm not sure, no, one point scored by Rose Roseblade, three more points on the board for Tyne and Fair by Sparky here. And if we just check in with those scores, Tyne and Fair on 20, Barrow with six, 27 minutes left of this first half to go. Not a time really for Barrow to be playing the short game. They absolutely need to start racking those points up on the board to be in with a chance. Kami Kenzie coming up against Jardine. Kami Kenzie, they're pushing that orange wall to the front. Passes on the outside, is whistled lead. Another lead here for Tyne Fair. Jardine still stuck in the back, gets a lot of offense from his team. Fantastic work by Kami Kenzie. Just a short hop over that apex jump to get past the defenses of Barrow. At the back of this pack, just by pivot line, we can see the defensive work from Tyne and Fear keeping Barrow's jammer. We're going to check out this apex jump that we just saw from Kami Kenzie. We're just coming in on that scoring pass. Scooches to the inside. Little hop and a skip completely diffuses the defenses from Barrow. Tw tw 26 points on the board for Tyne and Fear. Six points in that last jam. Barrow holding at six. Zero two seven. it's Nomad with the star against Mustache for Tyne and Fear. Nomad very successful in the last jam. This time not so much chipped off on the outside, recycled back to the jammer line. Up front, Mustache pushing forward. Wall of orange, though, just by the pivot line into turn one. And a knockout and recycle back on the inside gives Nomad now opportunity to try and grab that lead jam. Nearly 30 seconds into this jam, has terminate and still no lead jammer called. No, Mustache are actually losing his cover for a little bit, then grabbing it, gets recycled back in, now gets recycled back by Scandalous. Second time already this game. Like Beertex just said, no lead. Oh, really nice hit there on the outside by the Duke of York onto Mustache, who is hit out once again on the outside. Oh, Nomad finally breaks through that pack to grab lead. It wasn't pretty, but it was perfect. Nomad through now and on a scoring run, but Mustache off to the penalty box. Cut track penalty assessed. So this is a power jam and first of the game in favor of Barrow. An opportunity now knocks for them to close that 20 point differential between the two teams. I see some nice organized offense here. Blockers going into that pack one by one, trying to get Noel pass, but he falls to the floor, ends that jam. And of course that first minute, that first minute of no lead must have taken a lot of his energy out already. So maybe it was a very smart goal to just call this Look at that hit that he sustained there as well. You can see it was the Duke of York hit that gave Nomad opportunity to finally pick up lead for Barrow and grab those two points. Fantastic work. We are recycling back, reset and ready to go again. You're watching Tyne and Fear versus Barrow. Barrow in the orange, Tyne and Fear in the white and it's Roseblade with a power jam start taking full advantage as Tyne and Fierce Jammer stands in the penalty box. Very excited crowd here cheering Roseblade on. Tries that dip on the outside, but then just stands up straight, passes on the outside, pass Fubar, falls to the ground, gets up, continues skating, and now, of course, also a very talented blocker, actually engaging with the other Jammer, messing with him a little bit, and then calling it off. So five points picked up by Barrow. Let's check out the replay here. Roseblade on that scoring pass. There you see, just at the end, Roseblade able to call it off, grab those points and not give opportunity to Tyne and Fear to grab any points. Brilliant awareness by the Jammer as shown in our replay. We're back to the action right now. 
Tyne and Fear 26, Barrow 13. So 13 points separate these teams. It's Jardine up against Dark Matter from Tyne and Fear. Dark Matter though sneaks on the inside line to grab lead. Jardine knocked out in turn two and recycled back to the pivot line. In the meantime, Dark Matter is passing on the outside. Wonderful toe stop work there on the outside, just barely staying inside, but it's enough to score that Grand Slam, probably one of his last Grand Slams of the year or ever, since uh, they are going to get rid of those five point passes. Well, Jardine taken out in turn three, and Jam comes to an end. Let's watch the replay of that outside maneuver by. Tyne and Fears Jammer inside, Dukes outside, drops the shoulder, completely diffuses the block coming up against him to grab those five points and call off the jam. 31 now plays 13. Nomad already back on track for Barrow in Furnos next to what I believe is Moo. Yes, it is Moo there on the inside. So. Both jammers at the back of the pack. Nobody's really moving past jammer line right now. Moo takes a huge hit, knocked out, recycle back. Nomad on the outside line, just looking for the in, but defenses are strong from both of these teams. Moo pushing forward now, last line of defense, comes up against 117. Chop finally breaks through though to grab a lead for Tyne and Fear. Nomad removing the star is knocked out, recycle back into turn four. And of course, we're talking about the jammers a lot since they're the ones scoring the points, five more points on the board there by Mu. But look at the defense from these blockers as well, particularly those incredibly big hits by Mu. Star pass Scandalous. for Barrow. Scandalous, who now takes the star. First time jamming in this game. Da Mu is not having any of that, calling off that jam. Seven points picked up by Tyne and Fear, and you are absolutely right on the defensive work. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into the game, but right now you can clearly see with a 25-point difference, Tyne and Fear's defense is working that little bit more successfully than Barrow's. Lining up for Barrow, we have number 84, Roseblade. One of the most successful jam jammers in grabbing lead for Barrow so far in this game. 20 minutes left. And there you see, just as I say it, Barrow picking up lead. Sparky in hot pursuit for Tyne and Fear. And you can see the Barrow defense is into turn two, tightening up. Both jammers hit the back. 1-0. One, One more point. It was a really nice uh, little jump there on the inside. But it was either a little bit too late. We are going to see a replay of that, I believe. So just watch the action unfold here as both jammers racing out of that pack on their initial. Both hit for the scoring pass and fabulous work by Sparky for Tyne and Fear. Didn't grab the points, but definitely worth the effort. 14 plays 38. Of course, you're grabbing the points as you land. If you landed right after those whistles, no points for you, but incredible move. On to the next jam now. Well, this is Jardine versus Kami Kenzie. Kami Kenzie pushing forward, picks up lead. Last line of defense is 586. Speedy Fonzales unable to contain. But Jardine at the back of this pack, knocked back, recycled between jam and pivot line. As Kami Kenzie on this scoring pass, shrugs off the shrugs off the defensive action from Beer Matt and Chob to grab four points for Tyne. And once again, that amazing just muscle ankle control, toe stop control of the white jammers here, barely managing to stay inside, but raking in those points. Nine points for Tyne and Fear picked up, takes their score to 47. Barrow holding at 14. We've got 18 minutes 40 left of this first half. It is, of course, the uh, fourth game here today at Men's European Cup 2018. We're so glad that you're able to watch with us. I am the lovely Beatrix, and I'm joined by S Terminate, as well as Riggs on production, giving us all of those instant replays. Mustache comes up against Nomad. Jammer to jammer action to start this period of play. Scrum start now, as both teams build walls. But it is Nomad who, oh, as I was saying that, I was uh, saying that Nomad was tr almost getting out in the front. He gets a recycled all the way back now up behind Nicholas Rage and his buddies there with the 
China Fair Jam are now in the front. Very nice. Mustache getting knocked down by Scandalous. I mentioned him before again, but he does manage to get out as lead. So 35 seconds into that period of play and Mustache, as you say, grabs lead, which shows the defenses of Barrow now starting to tighten. Mustache coming in on a scoring pass. Barrow build the wall. Nomad does an apex jump that is medal worthy. Chemical just hit, tried to hit him out there on the inside, but he had to laugh to himself. You can see him laughing so amazed again by another one of those jumps, two times similar jumps, and it works for him. I mean, I feel blessed that we get to see double apex jumps of this quality. Let's go straight into that replay. I PC. can't even jump that eye without skates on. Nomad comes up that inside line, jumps the apex past Chemical Al. Completely neutralizes the defenses. 17 points picked up so far in this game by Barrow. Three in that last jam, and we're right back into the action. Dark Matter with the star for time comes up against Roseblade. And it is Dark Matter, your lead jammer. Almost out of that back simultaneously. Roseblade on the inside, who is now in the lead. Dark Matter took the outside, meaning he had to take a little bit of a long way around. Back speeding up. We haven't seen a lot of incredibly fast packs today so far. Not a lot of fast packs, not a lot of huge jams. One point picked up by Tyne and Fear. 16 minutes left of this first half here today. And a team timeout called by Barrow. Good opportunity, I feel, for them. As we say, they are now trailing by some points. And we'd just like to say thank you to RollerDerbyCity.com. Roller Derby City for team uniforms, apparels and apparel and team merchandise. They will give you everything your league desires. And I feel like the past couple of gems have been pretty easy on the penalties as well. That is a very nice empty Sisu mouth guard, a penalty box right there. And of course, as I'm saying this, I might jinx this. Hopefully I don't. And of course, we're incredibly happy you can all join us here looking, watching this game, listening to us explain everything to you. There is still a team timeout going on now for those just checking in with us. China Fair are currently in the lead with 51 points, 17 points to Barrow Infernos. We're a little, we're almost uh, halfway through the first period as we are going into the 13th jam. And here we go. It is Moo with the star. Comes up against Jardine for Barrow Infernos. Moo picks up lead. Drop of the shoulder to just get on past Beer Mat. Look at the back of here. Turn one, just past the pivot line. Barrow's jabber being smothered by the blockers from Tyne and Fear. Keeping him to the inside line, allowing Moo opportunity to get through. But Jardine does finally break through on that initial. Four points picked up by Moo, and Jam is called. It's interesting to see the different blocking styles going on here. We see those incredibly tight and tough white walls here. The Titan Fear blockers in those really tough tripods, just holding the blocker still. Whereas we have the Barrow Inferno blockers, who are a little bit more loosely positioned on the track, but they just give out those hits, handing out those hits, one by one by one, tiring out the jammer. It's interesting to see the different styles here. Yeah, so definitely I feel like Barrow's style of blocking is a little bit more of a recyclable wall, whereas Titan and Fear really holding that brace, keeping it strong. And we can see some more of that action as we go into this next jam. Sparky up against Nomad, and Sparky definitely with something to prove, as Nomad has been a jammer of note so far in this game. Grabs lead for Tyne and Fear. Yeah, but some of these jammers are just so fast and so agile. Look at that wonderful jump there by Sparky, picking up those points once again. Nomad has been contained at the back of this pack. Knocked inside, recycled back behind that brace three wall. We've seen Tyne and Fear build time and time again. They are not to be deflected from this purpose. Nomad has no choice, has to pass the star. Passes it to Dynamo. 
But Sparky already on another scoring pass here. He's completely in the driving seat. Checks in with the bench and calls off the jam, denying Barrow opportunity to score once again. And Sparky receiving that massive hit there by Duke of York, but also that wonderful apex jump that he just showed us. Look at him go in the replay here. Perfectly timed, brilliantly executed. Grab those 10 points for Tyne and Fear. Takes their overall score to 65. Barrow sitting at 17. We've got just over 13 and a half minutes left of this first half, and we're straight back into it. Cami Kenzie up against Roseblade. I think Barrow Infernos haven't scored in a couple of gems. Let's see what Roseblade's going to do about that, however. Cami Kenzie is ha out as Lee Jammer in this jam. Roseblade looking for the in at the front of this pack, still to complete the initial, chased out, but has to be let go, no pass, no penalty. Kemi Kenzie already coming in on a scoring pass, finds a huddle of orange from Barrow in turn three. And calls it off, but I believe was just a little bit too late, just two fingers held up by either jam referee. That is a two by two jam right now. So yeah, like I said, first points on the board for Barrow what I, in what I think has been a couple of jams. Good job, Roseblade. And having that awareness and presence and presence on track to be able to just put on that burst of speed when you need to to grab those last minute points is the kind of thing that really helps support your game. Back to it. We have Jardine up against Mustache. Mustache surrounded by Wall of Orange, forced to the inside, going to be recycled right the way back to jam line. Jardine in the middle of the jam pivot box, just pushing against the defenses. Brace three walls all over the place from Tyne and Fear. And that brace three wall gives excellent opportunity to Mustache to grab that lead jammer status. Jardine knocked inside and recycled once again as Mustache comes up to the walls of. Barrow finds space on the outside. And that massive hit there by Beermat onto a 60 quad bit there, who was trying to come in to do some offense, but gets knocked to the inside. Mustache in the mix once again, goes for the apex jump to avoid Beermat. Does not land it well, forced to recycle back. Scrum in turn one. As we see Jardine just trying to make that progress through, does it with a little apex jump. And remember, this is Jardine's initial jam. Five points already on the board in this jam for Tyne and Fear, as Mustache finally manages to break free of that pack, picking up five further points and calling off the jam. And we're going to see that massive hit there in the wonderful replay. So coming up into turn one, you see massive takedown. And I need to see, I need to say that the pivot that you just saw getting knocked down 60 quad bit has been absolutely wonderful in helping us out with the live stream here, helping us out this morning when we were all getting used to everything, telling us how everything worked. Um, so it was sad to see him take that hit. Well, Rose what we're not, we're not sad to see is Roseblade grabbing lead jammer for Barrow. Beautiful. Uh, example of how to work that inside line. Dark Matter is out for Tyne and Fear, but Barrow already on a scoring run. Take the outside line, escort it off and decide to call off the jam. Three points picked up by Barrow. None for Tyne and Fear, 10 and a half minutes left. And we're gonna check out that inside line escape right now. Oh, there you see Barrow's jammer, hop, skip, and a jump. And he's free and easy of that inside line. In the meantime, an official review has been requested by Barrow Infernos. We'll be able to tell you what uh, what's going on with that once we know a little bit more. And of course, we do have to give some massive love to Tyne and Fear, who are responsible for all the streaming of these wonderful games this weekend. Without them, you just have to imagine what was happening up here in the Walker Dome. Instead, you get to see us, them, and the crowds of Roller Derby in glorious Technicolor. 
as well as hopefully some of those doggos. I'm seeing a lot of people walking around with these t-shirts saying I'm only here for the burgers or only here for the beers, but I do know that uh, especially a lot of the announcers are mostly here for the doggos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's the only reason I'm here. I'm just saying 80% of the reason. <laughs> And we would also, during this ti uh, official timeout, like to thank our medical staff. Events medical team, Saltney, have returned to the Walker Activity Dome yet again to provide excellent high-quality medical cover. Their service and attitude is second to none, and they are appreciated for being here at the Men's European Cup and Roller Derby in general. Event medical team, Saltney, are specialists in event first aid and medical cover. They cover all types of event, regardless of size. So there was a request during that jam for a multiplayer block committed by White26. Officials reviewed, the no call stands. This means that they have lost their official review for this period. One official review, however, left for Dino Fair Nomad in the meantime, I believe has hit out. Is that Dark Matter? I think, no, that is not Dark Matter. That is Moo there on the outside is very easily recycling him like he's just going out for a nice skate well i mean time and fear don't have to um they've got a rush they're absolutely in the lead 55 point differential right now there is absolutely no uh, no downside to them burning the clock we've got uh, nine minutes 34 left on the period clock so oh it works well for time and fear i'm not sure why barrow would do it it would have it would have been nice to have them down a lap, but as we see, as, we, as we've mentioned before, uh, these walls that Tyne and Fair are putting up are so incredibly tight that it is probably a lot easier for Moo to then again uh, get in another pass than it is for Nomad. Oh, Nomad in the mix now. You can see just into turn three here, Nomad able to break through, completing his initial. Uh, Moo also makes it out and being in that driving seat means he's able to call off the jam. Four points picked up further for Tyne and Fear. Takes their score to 81. Barrow sitting at 22. Jardine already getting ready to get his jam on for Barrow. Inferno's there. Up against Sparky for a Tyne Fair. A lot of space being given to boat jammers here. Oh, look, it's a pivot line huddle. Love them. They're all the rage again these days. Sparky loves them too. Picks up lead for Tyne and Fair like it ain't no thing, but oh dear. Penalty trouble for Sparky means this is power jam in favor of Barrow. Second power jam of the game. Second one in favor of Barrow. An absolute opportunity now for Jardine to grab some points. Especially as his pivot is now also joining him in the box. One blocker down, jammer off track. Well, Nicholas Rage and co. Certainly not gonna make this passage of play easily for Jardine. Jardine held at the front of this pack just in turn one and penalty comes to an end for Tyne and Fierce Sparky. He's back on track and in play, looking to pick up points for Tyne and Fear. Four so far with a minute left of this jam. Of course, this jam will go for the full two minutes since lead jammer was called. Jardine, however, has put that grand slam on the board as well. Four more points now for Sparky on the board. We have uh, 45 seconds left in this jam. Seven minutes, a little bit over seven minutes left on the period clock. Four more points by Sparky. He's just so fast, I can barely keep up. So three successful passes so far. Make that four for Tyne and Fear. Barrow with two successful passes. Nine points on the board for them. This could be a mega jam points-wise for both teams. Beautiful outside line footwork there by Barrow to grab those extra points, but Tyne and Fear over the 100 mark now as this jam runs on into the 20s. Jardine knocked out, recycled back on the straightaway between turns two and three. I think he's just given up. 
This we see seems to be seems to be having a really hard time getting through. And look at this wonderful replay here. The outside line footwork from Barrows Jammo just with the dip, one footed. Meant they were able to get on through and he picked up four further points for Barrow. 13 in total in that jam for Barrow, but 23 for Tyne and Fear takes the scores. Barrow 35, Tyne and Fear 104. We've got just under six minutes left of this first half and jam rolls on. And that's Kamikaze already out as a lead here in this next jam up against Robley, who's, who's Roseblade, who is still stuck in that pack. Once again, trying to help his team by performing some blocks there on Kamikaze, but it is not enough. Roseblade now in the front, only a couple of more blockers left to pass with some help from his wonderful teammate, Duke of York. Kamikaze on a scoring run as Roseblade comes out of the pack. Five points picked up by Tyne and Fear. Barrow held at zero. And as you said, fantastic blocking work from the Barrow team to try and swing their jammer free and grab some much needed points at this juncture in the game. 109 plays, 35, five minutes left of this first half of Tyne and Fear versus Barrow. It is game four of the 2018 Men's European Cup. And I am the lovely Beatrix joined by S Terminate. And joining us on the track right now are Nomad and Mustache. Mustache getting hit out on the inside by once again by Duke of Yorker. And it is Nomad who picks up this lead for Barrow Infernos. Mustache now also out on the inside there. Nomad finds the inside line free and clear. Comes up against a three wall resistance from Tyne and Fear. Able to pick off those blockers one by one though. Number 83, Nicholas Rage was last line of defense. Nomad with four points on the board. Looks like he might run it long as Time and Fears Jammer also out and scoring points. Oh, and yet again, Nomad with those apex jumps shows us how it's done. I believe that is the biggest apex jump we've seen so far today. But I mean, we still might have a Reaper to get on track tonight. So let's well, see how he's going to do. Let's check out Nomad's apex jump here. You can see the speed building into turn three. A huge leap. It's almost like he has wings. Maybe he's been drinking Red Bull. Who knows? Eight points, though. A positive point differential for Barrow in that jam. Against Tyne and Fear's four means the scores are 43 for Barrow. 1-1-3 one, one, for Tyne and Fear. And we dance straight back into it. Dark matter for Tyne and Fear. Roseblade for Barrow. But it is dark matter able to grab lead jammer in favor of Tyne and Fear. Roseblade in the mix, knocked it outside, recycled back. That did mean that the inside line of turn two became free and easy for Tyne and Fear's jammer. And Dark Matter was really able to uh, work on that. Dark Matter have also scoring zero points here in this last pass before he is forced to call it off, gets knocked out before passing any blockers. Five more points on the board for Tyne Fair, bringing the total up to 118 points, 43 points for Barrow right now. A little bit less than three minutes left on the period clock for this first period here. And Jardine and Moo getting ready to jam. Well, a familiar pairing. And most recently we have seen Moo having that success of picking up lead. Jardine though takes the outside line, hops, skips and jumps, followed closely by Moo. Both jammers knocked out, recycled back, resetting almost to jam line. Baron Furness up front with their three wall. Number 82, Dog for Tyne and Fear comes in, tries to run some interference to support Moo, does so. And Moo able to pick up lead 34 seconds into this jam. Jardine still though at the back of the pack has removed the star. But he's still finding those hits raining down from Tyne and Fear's blockers. And with Chop being sent to the Sisu Mouthguard penalty box for a multiplayer block, that means one less blocker for him to worry about. But he was worrying about quite a few blockers as he is now sent off to the penalty box for a cut track penalty. So this is Power Jam in favor of Barrow. Jardine coming into the pack. Just taking his time to plot out progress. 
But there we have number 82. It's Dog once again running that disruption line. Nicholas Cage coming into support. Dog, though, jumps the apex to grab those much needed points for Barrow. Two in total. And begins to come around once again. Dog hanging out at the back of this track between turns two and three. Uh, three and four, sorry. And beautiful work by Jardine to run up the outside line. Quite a tall jammer as well, but look at him doing those wonderful bean dips there on the outside. That's well, move back on track and in play for Tyne and Fia. Sneaks past pretty much unopposed to grab five further points for them. Jardine coming in. Well, worked it hard out in that jam. And you can see right there on the track then. Looking a little bit tired. Nine points picked up by Barrow though. Five points for Tyne and Fear. So 52 plays one, two, three. And we've got under 30 seconds left of this first half. Official review called by Tyne and Fear to get that second, uh, that last jam in, I'm guessing. Looks like it's been used as a uh, timeout. Might as well use it, because you're gonna lose it. Oh look, there we are. Unexpected announcer shots, just when you were least expecting it, and my favorite kind. So Barrow Jam wise, Barrow have actually had the, um, They've had two power jams in their favor in this game. However, both times they've been unable to capitalize on that due to the defensive nature and the strategy that Tyne and Fear are putting up on the track so far in this first half. Lots of really tight walls, as we've said. That beautiful bracing that does not come off course absolutely stays true to their focus. They do not allow the Barrow blockers to disrupt them from, from what, their, what their main mission is, if you like. Barrow a little bit more spread out. We saw that recycling, those raining down on hits on the jammer for Tyne and Fear. However, that slightly looser wall means that they're not being effective in stopping the Tyne and Fear jammer the majority of the time, but they're also not effectively able to then um, run offense to support their own jammer. So it's kind of... It's kind of not doing anything either way. It's it's really interesting to see how, how Tyne and Fear are really choosing containing the jammer over hitting the jammer out and recycling the jammer. They really want to keep control. They know that they have that control if they have that jammer locked down behind that tripod. Um, but we can really tell that Barrow is more, these jammers are incredibly fast. And, yeah. and even though there are some amazing blockers on track, what I always say, you are never going, as a blocker, nine out of 10 times, you are not going to be faster than a really talented and a really mm. athletic jammer. Mm. And with these jammers that we're seeing here today, you need to lock them down with multiple people often. And Tyne and Fair are really doing that. They're really playing it safe when it comes to tripods. And that's what's bringing them up to that 123 right now versus the 52 points for Barrow Infernos. We're just getting back the results from that official review right now. Um, that Tyne and Fear were requesting the cut against their jammer to be revoked. Um, the call stands. So the referees have reviewed this. Uh, penalty will not be revoked and we will go into what I do believe will be the final jam of this first period. Yeah, and uh, you know what? It was right and proper for Tyne and Fear to use their official timeout, their official review. As we said, if you don't use it, you lose it anyway. Worth trying. Well, Sparky certainly is trying out on track for Tyne and Fear as he picks up lead for them. Nomad breaking through nearly a full lap behind for Barrow. Wonderful offense being played there by Duke of York. Those incredibly hard shoulder hits that he's pushing in, just opening up half the track for his jammer there. Getting Nomad out. It does not, however, stop Sparky from putting four more points on the board in his final jam of the first period. So that does take us there. Barrow on 52, Tyne and Fear on 127. We're going to be back with more insightful commentary and uh, delightful words after this 15-minute halftime. We'll also give you a good old update on the penalties. So until then, sit tight or grab a beer. <laughs> 